This week on Winchester's Deadly Passion, we're taking a step back on some of the most memorable hunts that I've ever had. First up, we're heading to Africa. South Africa is an extremely game-rich environment, but it's tough hunting. And the reason why? The cover is so thick. It is really tough because you may see just a little tip of a horn or a flash of an animal going through, but to get a good shot, to be able to see those vitals and see what's going on, well, it is tough. But that's why I brought my bow. And that's why I love water holes. After shooting my first Impala the night before and having countless other animals parade around in front of the camera, we decided to head back to our little slice of heaven and see what else Africa had in store. We had been seeing a ton of Impala and finally we had a group of kudu coming in. A few cows coming in and a huge bull. It looked big to me behind them and they were coming up to the water and just as he got right to the edge, they all decided to scatter and get out of it. Now I have no idea why they didn't drink, but it was so close and I felt like, well, the water hole might be a good chance for a cooter. The trick to a water hole is setting up in an area where the animals are comfortable. Well, we had the perfect setup. They had a blind that had been built a long time before we had got here. In fact, it was all cement and rock and the perfect setup. We would have a dark area to shoot from and the animals were completely comfortable with it. Not much later, we had a little bit smaller bull come in and actually drink. Now this was super tempting. I got to full draw trying to decide, is this the bull that I want? And I'd been hearing so many stories of big bulls and let's face it, the one that was just there earlier, well, he hadn't left my mind yet. So I decided to let down and just let this bull walk. He was beautiful, but he'd probably be even bigger in about a year or two. And I knew there were some absolute giants in the area. We had a lone cow come in and I really was excited. My adrenaline was pumping and I thought there'd be a bull right behind her, but no such luck. She walked away and there we were waiting for a bull and nothing else came. Not even a half hour later and we caught a glimpse of a kudu bull coming in to the water. He was a jaw dropper right from the beginning. As soon as I saw him, I knew there's no question, this is a shooter. As he slowly made his way to the water, he went right in and got a drink. But after his first drink, you could tell. He seemed nervous and I wasn't sure why. He kept looking over at my little GoPro camera and I was hoping, as cool as the footage would probably be, I didn't want it to spook him. As he went down for another drink, he decided no way and picked up his head and he looked like he was leaving. Now I knew this was my shot. got to full draw, waited for the shot, he was broadside, and I placed it right in the area I needed to hit. I've got very good penetration right behind the shoulder where I needed it to be, but this is a huge African animal, so you want to make sure to give it some time. <laughs> what an absolutely beautiful animal. Check out the size of this wreck. This is by far the biggest kudu I have ever seen, not to mention I got him with a bow. To me, there is nothing better than having an animal this size come in close. We're talking inside 20 yards. Check out this. Beautiful tips, just thick bases all the way through. An absolute beauty. As far as I'm concerned in Africa, a kudu is the best animal out here, and I couldn't be more proud than to have taken him with a bow. Plus the fact, he's an absolute giant. Winchester's Deadly Passion is presented by Winchester, the American legend. Matthews, catch us if you can. Cuddyback Digital. Bog Pod, versatility defined. 
Easton, expect the best. Winchester Repeating Arms and Hunter Safety System. So next, we're headed to my favorite Big Buck location. After sitting on the first stand location and seeing what came out that evening, I decided I was in for a change. I had set so many different places up that it was hard to stay in one location. So I decided to head to another field and sit on a U-shaped turnip field with mixed with buck forage oats. Now this place has produced giant bucks. You're not always going to see the number of deer you'll see on other places, but when you see bucks, usually they're a whopper. Once three o'clock or so came, deer started coming onto the field. In fact, I had several does come out and bed right in the middle of the food plot. Talk about a perfect decoy setup. And then I saw a buck. I'm watching this guy coming through the back just like the bigger bucks do. They don't always walk right out onto the field if they want to maybe scent check the does or just see what's going on. They'll usually stay in cover without exposing themselves. And that's exactly what this guy did. He was just inching along the sides, watching the deer, and I looked at him and he was nice. Very nice, big rack, but no brows. Now this wasn't quite the buck I was looking for, but it definitely got my spirits up knowing that the bucks were probably on their feet and I had all the decoys needed right in my field. I don't know, might be making a big mistake here, but if I am, I'll go home without a tag and guess I don't get any venison this year. When you're hunting in December, the weather can change in an instant. And unluckily for me, it started snowing, raining, just turning into a nasty day. Now this is a farm where you're not gonna see a ton of deer. You're gonna see a couple, but guess what? I don't have a ton of tags. I've got one buck tag. And my cutty back has been sitting out and it's telling me there are some giants here. There's one that's palmated at drop time. Another huge frame buck, basically any of those will do. And that's kind of what's been giving me the confidence to keep passing these bucks, which I normally would have probably shot. There's no way I'd be on day three and let a buck like that walk by. But having a trail camera, I know what's here. It's not that maybe someone's seen them, oh, they think it's a 170, 180, 190. I've seen the pictures. He's a giant. Now, I just gotta wait. And that's the tough part. <laughs> As the sun started setting, I looked over and I saw a buck right in the field. That was so cool. It's almost, almost at the end of shooting light. Any other producer in the world would have probably said, no goat, you're not shooting. But lucky for me, I'm on my own on this one. <sighs> that is one beautiful buck. Wow, not only is this an absolute beautiful buck, I filmed the whole hunt myself. This is not one you pass. This guy came into turnips about 10 minutes from dark and he's just got all points. This is what deer hunting's all about, waiting for the buck you've been looking for. Something like this, no one in their right mind could pass this guy. He's coming home in my truck. Wow. <laughs> well, this big boy was definitely worth the wait. Scoring 174 inches, this buck was a true trophy. And the thing is, I had just a wonderful hunt all the way leading up to it. 
I saw a ton of great bucks. Even if I didn't end up with a deer, I would have been happy. But a buck like this? Well, now my answer is simple. When people ask where my favorite whitetail hunting destination in the country is, Golden Triangle Whitetails in West Central Illinois. Can you blame me? At this one place, I've been lucky enough to take a 202 inch buck with my bow after a pack of coyotes chased an entire field of deer to me. A 174 inch whitetail with my muzzleloader on this late season hunt. A 164 with my shotgun after I filmed them for nearly nine minutes earlier in the season just outside of bow range and a couple other beautiful bucks along the way as well. This is proof that if you're willing to put in the time scouting, hunting, planting food plots and you find quality hunting land, the sky's the limit when it comes to big bucks in Illinois. Wow. <laughs> Winchester's Deadly Passion is presented by Swarovski Optic North American Hunting Club Rage Broadheads Golden Triangle Whitetail Can-Am ATVs and side-by-side -side vehicles Send killer gold with hunt dry technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. And MP, advanced by design. Closed captioning is brought to you by the 4 in 1 Woodsman from Zippo Outdoor. There's not much that can give you as much of an adrenaline rush as a thousand pound gator on the end of your line. With all the recent activity with swamp people, they've really brought to light the fun of gator hunting. Now the thing about hunting Louisiana, well it's a little bit of a crapshoot because when you get one on a hook, well there's no catch and release, so you need lady luck on your side. That means it's almost like trapping. You have to have your bait set up just perfect. You take old, rotten, stinking chicken and you bring it out and hook it on a line. And there's a lot that goes into it where you place it, how high above the water. If your bait drops down too close to the water, gators don't want it. Now that we got the chicken all set, we're gonna try something completely different for gator hunting. We're gonna sit in a tree stand way up in the tree, and that way we can come and see these gators as they come hit this bait. I've got a cuddyback set up to try to get them as it happens, and well, this is gonna be something totally different. The biggest thing is, don't drop anything out of the tree stand because it's going to hit water and you're not getting it back. That includes me. I don't want to fall in and be the next gator bait. Now I'm talking sky hot. We wanted to make sure that we could see everything that was going on and not spook any of the gators. About midday on the second day of sitting there, we had a gator come into the bait. Now this gator wasn't huge, but he put on quite a show. So I'm pretty sure this gator ended up burning up all his energy. He was absolutely fun to watch. Now we were up high enough that we could also see another gator sunning himself out on a log. Now unfortunately, nothing came to where my cuddyback was set up, but we decided to start doing a little scouting. We wanted to find an area that gators were frequenting. Well, Alan found the absolute perfect place, a section of land where all the gators actually had made a slide, coming from the land back into the water. This was as good as a buck rub. We knew there were big gators in the area, so it seemed like a perfect place to set up our bait. Well, I was pretty confident we had found the money spot. Getting in the boat the next morning, I had a great feeling. We got up to our spot and we started looking and not only was the branch down, the entire tree seemed to be in the water. Now my first thoughts are what kind of a gator did we get ourselves into?
I need a bigger boat. <laughs> called in a little backup. And as he pulled this gator out of the water, I just stood there in awe. I could hardly believe it. This gator was truly bigger than our boat. This is one gator that you would never believe was living in this little area. A gator like this, well, he could probably eat me in about one to two bites. So the gator slam was finally complete. 11-5. 11-5. I had my big gator with a bow, one with the rifle, and now I had a beautiful gator with a hook. I've had a ton of great people helping me along the way on all these gator hunts, and uh, if it wasn't for all their hard work, well, I probably wouldn't have been as lucky as I was, but you know what? I'll take a little luck on my side any day. This was one of the most fun hunts, and it is pretty intense when you pull up on that tree and see that big old mouth under there and knowing that you have got a huge gator on the line. In fact, this guy, he could have got in our boat at any second. Talk about super intense hunting, and uh, you don't have a very big area to shoot, so things can get pretty crazy, but a giant gator in the end, and we have got a lot of gator meat on this guy. It's not every day you get to travel to such a beautiful place as New Zealand. And it's not every day you get to take a world record day either. But this is not every day. Yeah, it looks good. He's there. He, he, he's where he was last night. He's grazing away from us. The wind's perfect. He went down at about 100 yards, but this is one huge stag. <laughs> you can see the blood coming out of him. When he, when he went down there and he dropped, I thought, yeah, he's, he's history. And he's, he's rolled over. He's, he's gone. He's probably gone only 120 yards, 110 yards, if that. Hey, you tell me I'm going to need suntan lotion in I know, New Zealand. I, know. I don't, I don't I know, know what, what kind of person you think I am, but I'm freezing. Hey, I thought you were from Minnesota. I thought you could handle the cold. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I have never, ever much less seen anything this big and shot it with my bow. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Look at that. A forked vessel snag. Oh, he's just beautiful. He's just perfect. He's got a kicker coming off the side. He's got what looks like sort of a dropper coming off the back of there. Oh. Wow. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, BJ. First time ever to New Zealand, and BJ has been treating us wonderful. We're out here with ample hunting, and this is an absolute gorgeous stag. My first stag ever. We got to spot and stock it with a bow. And you guys not only have just a beautiful place, but absolutely beautiful animals. Scoring 474. At the time of this filming, this stag makes Melissa the new world record holder for biggest stag ever with a bow for a woman.